Wow, guys, about to react to a new video. Ted Cruz destroys Caitlin Collins. Check this out. He lied when you when he beat when you beat him the first time in Iowa. And you know, when he became president, I had a choice to make. I, I could be pissed. I could be pissed off at what he'd done. But if I was gonna do that, he'd just been elected president. I got a job. I got a job to represent 30 million Texans. And frankly, if I was gonna let my hurt feelings make me say I'm not gonna work with you, I needed to be prepared to resign my job and go home. And, and I made a decision then. I said, listen, I'm going to go represent 30 million Texans. I'm going to fight. I got on a plane. I flew to Trump, Trump Tower. I sat down with him, spent four and a half hours. This is the week after the general election in 2016. And what I told him then, I said, Mr. President, we have an historic situation. The voters have given us control of the White House and both houses of Congress. We can't waste this. And I told him then, I said, listen, I want to roll up my sleeves and go to work and lead the effort to deliver on our promises. And as I look back to the Trump presidency, I think we accomplished incredible victories I, for the I, American people. But this moment, what you said there, you know, you, you talked about your family. They targeted not just your dad, but also your wife. And I think a lot of people sitting at home would say, well, that's pretty cynical. I mean, this is someone who, who attacked the, you know, your own members of your family. And what we learned from this testimony is that not only did Donald Trump know about it, he coordinated it. I, look, I understand, but I knew then it was lies. It was lies then. It's but you didn't lies know now. Donald Trump himself. Of was course I did. I it. said he did. It was obvious. And at the end of the day, I'm a big boy. And as I said, I could have made a choice. Listen, if I were a private citizen, I could decide my feelings are hurt and I'm just going to leave. But if I do that, I can't do my job. And, and, and I care about my job. And, and I will say, if you look at the people of Texas, under almost any measure, the people of Texas were much, much better when Trump was president than compared to now. You look at, we passed an historic tax cut. I worked very hard with him on that. It I don't care if you don't like his rhetoric. I don't care if you don't like how he goes about things, as long as he gets things done. Produced incredible economic prosperity. We had the lowest unemployment rate in 50 but years. But do you think of the tactics that he used to get I don't like him. Was? I can't stand him. Do you think he would have been the nominee had he not done stuff like that? I, I don't know. I, I think Donald Trump is a unique character in American history. There are things he says and does that I like. There are things he says and does that I don't like. I'll, I'll tell you what millions of Americans love about him is that he's got backbones and guts and, and, and that he's willing to we, stand uh, and fight and, and, and that matters. And we... Exactly. He's willing to stand and fight. He, had, he has backbone and guts. With everything they do with him, he's, he's still standing. He's still getting shot at. He's still making a change. He's still doing what he can for our country. He, I don't even know how to put it, man. This this guy is like, this is this is this guy's a problem for 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 the people that are in control. He, but but he's the solution for us. He's the problem for them, but he's the solution for us. Make that man. I'm telling you, make that guy president. Let's keep going, guys. We talk to voters all the time about this, but at the time, I mean, this wasn't, it was eight years ago, but it wasn't that long ago. You were both adults then, and you said that Trump didn't know the difference between truth and lies, that he lies practically every word that comes out of his mouth, and you said it was straight out of a psychology textbook, that his response to, is, to an accusation is to accuse everyone else of lying. I mean, do you feel differently now, despite he, working together? He, he says all sorts of things I wish he didn't say. I value civility in politics. I think we should treat each other with respect, even if we disagree with each other. I can't control what other people say. I can't control what other Republicans say. I can't control what other Democrats say. I can say that the people of Texas were a lot better when the border was secure. And under Donald Trump, we had the most secure border, the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 45 years than they are right now with an invasion at our southern we border. We talked about immigration last night. We had Senator James Lankford on the program. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he crafted the bill that, that Trump sank that would have helped with a lot of those problems, according so it to wouldn't. James It was Lankford. a terrible bill. Well, that, James Lankford disagreed. We talked about that criticism. Well, but, he's going to vote no on, on it tomorrow. On Nikki Haley and what you heard from her. Yeah, we talked about that. What you heard from her tonight saying that she will vote for Donald Trump. Do you empathize with her? She's in a similar position to well, look, you. Look, I, I understand that journey, and I, I was in that position. Now, she didn't win any states, but, but she was the, the last person standing. Um, I understand, and, that's, and she was in a hard-fought primary. I, under, I, I have been in that spot. Um, and it took some time for me to decide what to do. And, and, and I did not initially endorse Donald Trump. And as I thought about it, I wrestled with it. I wrote a long two-page two essay that ultimately explained when I did endorse Trump. And I said at the time, I said, listen, I'm not sure what Trump will do in office. I don't know if he'll be a conservative or not. But I know what Hillary's promising to do. And what she's promising to do, I think, would be really harmful. 
And so I'm going to make the decision to go with someone who is saying he will do good things, and I'm going to do everything I can to help encourage him to do yeah, good We've things. seen this argument. I mean, we've had Bill Barr was sitting in that seat, and yeah. he said he's voting for Donald Trump, even though he said Donald Trump can't get his, his policies accomplished. He said Donald Trump basically gets in his own way. But I do want to ask you about the election. You were the first senator to, to object yeah. to, the, to the votes. Mm -hmm. In 2024, will you certify the election results? Do you plan to object, or will you accept the results regardless of who wins the election? So, so Caitlin, i got to say, I, th I think that's actually a, a ridiculous question. It's a yes or no question, I, though. No, it's not. Let, let me explain why it's a ridiculous question. It's not a question. You've ever asked a Democrat that? Of course. What Democrat? But, but what but, Democrats? But, but, hold on a second. What Democrats? It, this this is a lot all at once. So I want to say one thing. She just tried to sit there and say they asked the voters, uh, the Democrat voters, all types of questions, and they have all positive things to say and a bunch of negative stuff to say about Trump. That makes no sense because if you go look at the Benny Johnson's new video, they're on there asking people in Chicago where Barack Obama claims he's from, how they feel about Trump, and everybody's saying that they're voting for Trump. This is the type of stuff the media doesn't want to show you. They don't want to show you because it shines a bright light on him. And it kind of makes the guy that they're pushing so much look bad. That's, that's, that's honestly what they're trying to do nowadays. And it's just so sad how all this stuff is going on. But the people that want to keep voting Democrat don't see it. It's I can't say too much about it because I used to be a little blinded by it too. But, man, I thought I started doing some digging and start finding out who these people really are and what they really want to push and how they're trying to take advantage of kids, man, it's it's become way easier to see it. But I, I, I want to try to spread the truth as much as possible with, with what's going on. So let's keep going, guys. Democrats challenge it. What Democrats? Hillary, I know, I know. I, I've been down this road a many, many times. But, but, but no Democrat, you cannot compare the two situations. We have talked about that. We've seen the audio of that. When they protested hey, but, but, but on the Senate hold on a second. But, in, but have in, they ever? Has you ever had a sitting president who refused to facilitate the peaceful transition of power? Refused way, to acknowledge that his successor won the presidency. Uh, so a, we did have a peaceful transfer of power. I was there on January twentieth. I was there on the swearing. Barely. B, if you look at in in two thousand, Democrats went to the Senate, or two thousand one, Democrats went to the Senate floor and objected to George W. Bush. In 2004, and the they do? went and objected. And what did the president in, in, do? In 2016, Democrats went and objected to Donald Trump. And, and so... Look, and what happened in 2016? Because I remember a guy named Joe Biden was vice president, and, and he went to the Senate floor and certified the votes. So do you Am want... Am I wrong? Be, so you're asking, will you promise, no matter what, to agree an election is illegitimate regardless of what happens? And... That would be an absurd thing to claim. Like, we have an entire election law system that people challenge elections, elections get overturned, voter fraud gets proven. That happens all the time. And the media engages in this weird game post Donald Trump that you insist no voter fraud has ever existed. Why does every state have laws in place to challenge voter fraud if it occurs? The media Why do you have election challenges? This isn't a game. There was no it widespread is a game. voter it is, fraud. You, you was, only was... ask Republicans that. You, because you ask it was Republicans what... who tried to block the transition of power. You have to acknowledge that. So, we've never seen it on a scale of what happened in 2020. and We've never seen the president refuse. He wouldn't even let Joe Biden get classified briefings at the beginning. So, so, I recall that. So, so, let me so be... my question for you again... Free and fair election, will you accept the results regardless of who wins? Look, if the Democrats win, I will. I'm not going to lie, man. It's going to be really hard for me to accept the results this year with everything we've been through. If you guys, like, you guys really go out and you vote blue after these tough times we just lived in. Man, I don't, I don't know how much of this I could take. Honestly, I don't know how much. I don't know how you could just be so oblivious to what's going on. Like, voting blue will be the biggest mistake that you could make. I think this year in your lifetime. Because, man, we're not going to see changes. They haven't changed anything. Any of the times they've been elected, they've only caused harm to this country. Let's finish this video off, guys. I'm going to tap back in at the end of this. Let's keep going. Accept the result, but I'm not going to ignore fraud but regardless fraud of what happens. But was fraud in 2020? 
Of course there was fraud in no, 2020. No, there wasn't, and you still objected. I, oh, you know for a fact there was zero voter fraud. Really, what's your basis for that? Show me your evidence. We've spoken with Governor Kemp. They did three hand recounts in the state of Georgia. The director of CISA said that it was the safest, uh, most legitimate election. So, but in you're United saying States zero history. voter fraud occurred. That's what These you just said. Nothing that would have changed the outcome. Okay, of that but that's election. a different statement. But no, it's not because yes, if it, it wouldn't is. have changed. You the said there was no voter fraud. That's there the was thing. no voter fraud that would have changed the outcome of the election. And you. Wait a minute. We just caught her. Evidence. We've spoken with Governor Kemp. They did three hand recounts in the state of Georgia. The director of CISA said that it was the safest, uh, most legitimate election. So, but in you're United saying States zero history. voter fraud occurred. That's what These you just said. Nothing that would have changed the outcome. Okay, of that but that's election. a different statement. But nothing that would have changed the outcome. That's still voter fraud. So, what stuff went undetected? We got them. <laughs> Come on, man. No, it's not. Because hey, if yes, it wouldn't it have changed you the You said there was no voter fraud. That's there was the no voter fraud that would have changed the outcome of the election. And you know that, so, Senator. So, so what what I know is, is that what I stood on, on the Senate floor and objected, what I called for, I'll tell you, I wrestled with what to do in that circumstance. And the reason I wrestled with it is because I think there was significant voter fraud in 2020. And... You wanted the 10 day commission, I know, but was there voter fraud that but, would have but, changed but, but the But do you know why I wanted a 10 day commission? Because I tried to look, I'm, I'm a Supreme Court litigator. I argue cases in front of the Supreme Court. I know. I tried to look through history and precedent and the best precedent I could find was the election of 1876. Elect 1876 was between Rutherford B. Hayes and Samuel Tilden. And what happened there, there were serious allegations of voter fraud and, and Congress didn't throw its hands up and say, you know what? CNN demanded that I accept the results no matter what, so ignore the fraud. I gotta go. So, so, but hold on. What did Congress do in 1876? How did the president handle it? What did Congress do in 1876? Senator, I have to what, know, you can't I'm answer yes or no to this question. I'm asking a question. What did Congress do in 1876? You can't answer yes or no to this I, question. And can, Republicans, can you answer my question? Why are you refusing well, to answer my question? I'm conducting the interview with okay, all due but, respect, but, but, Senator. But but and let me ask you one more. It's Republicans have twisted themselves in knots. It's I'm just a yes or no question. I'm not twisting myself. I'm answering your question. You just and, don't like my answer. And what's your answer? Is it yes or is it no? So in 1876, what Congress did is it appointed an election commission. It consisted of 15 people, five House members, five senators, five Supreme Court justices. The election commission was charged with studying the evidence and making a determination of what voter fraud occurred. And that determined the winner. And what I called for in 2020 was to do the same thing, appoint an election commission, and, uh, and 11 been, senators joined me. Senator, with all due respect, after it had been thrown out of many courts, after the Attorney General Bill Barr, because Why? there was no basis for those court cases. No, no, no. So, so that's, that, that's actually Senator, not... Senator, with all due respect... You asked me a question. Do you want me to answer it? And you didn't answer you, the question. You, you, yes, I court did. Cases were thrown uh, hold out. hold on a second. The Attorney General said there was no widespread fraud. You're not clearly answering the question. I, I, I want to thank you for that. What question am I not... I'm answering every question. I think the country would have been a lot better off with a determination of what evidence of voter fraud there was that occurred. And instead, the media didn't want to hear it and insist voter fraud never occurs. You ought to go back and look at the Wasn't Carter the Baker media, Commission. It was the Attorney General, and my question was about uh, It was the media. It was CNN that relentlessly, was pushed, relentlessly pushed that propaganda. And by the way, what never propaganda? holds... propaganda? That there holds, was no widespread fraud in yeah, the election? That, that, that voter fraud doesn't exist, and anyone who says it does is wearing a tinfoil hat. Uh, that is propaganda. And by the way, you never asked Hillary Clinton this. You never asked Stacey Abrams this. You never asked Al Gore this. With all due respect, and every Senator, one of them with all due said respect, the Senator, Republicans who won were illegitimate. I haven't had any of them on my show. We'll talk to them. But I don't remember there being a president who was refusing to turn over the transition of power and facilitate it. And, and Trump didn't either. Joe my Biden question was about 2024. President. You did not answer let, it. Let me, thank say you for final, let me say a final Senator point Ted for you. Cruz, you said they haven't come. Thank you very much, my Senator Ted Cruz. My opponent Colin Allred hasn't either. He ought to come to your show. Senator Ted Cruz, no answer to that question. Thank you very much. You know, guys, that interview kind of started off fine and okay, like it was watchable. But then she said, I'm conducting the interview. That's when it, you know, turned into a debate and it became not watchable. I don't understand how she's trying to take up for these people that keep trying to steal elections from Trump. Let me know what you guys think about this quick video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you're new. And as always, let me know what to react to. We're out.